What is up everyone and welcome back to episode 5 of our Classic Master League with Classic Manchester United. Just a quick look at the table after 5 games. As you can see there we're really struggling. I mean we've only scored 3 goals and conceded 4. And we are in 13th position. That's going to have to change. I mean we have goals in the squad. I mean we've got unbelievable strikers in the game. Uh, but it just doesn't seem to be playing for us. I don't know if it's me or what it is. But as you can see there, Georgie Best and Neville have made the team of the month. Kempes obviously as well from Classic Valencia. He put two passes I think in the last episode. So check that one out if you haven't already. And Kempes is on top of the pile. Um, and we've got you know Andy Cole, Ryan Giggs and Beckham who have scored our three goals. So it's been a difficult start to the season. I'm hoping that we can kick on today with three episodes here. Or three, ep three matches in this episode I should say. Um, we've got Liverpool up first, I think it's River Plate and I think Roma at the end as well so three cracking games and hopefully we can pick up some good points. Uh, this Liverpool team is absolutely stacked as well and it's always going to be a tough game when it's Manchester United versus Liverpool. These are one of our rival teams set up in the option file so I knew that this was going to be you know, a very difficult game. Um, and you look at Liverpool's team, I mean what a team, unbelievable, John Barnes, Ian Rush, Daglish. Gerard McManaman and Zabi Alonso, Carragher at the back with Hansen. Phil Neal is there as well. They've got a really good squad and a really good bench. So straight away we just decided to kind of go in all guns blazing. We were sliding into tackles. We were not letting Liverpool settle at all really. Um, and just trying to find a bit of space down the wings. Trying to exploit Kennedy and Neal on the wings. And Ronaldo did get the cross in there to go 1-0 up. So that was Georgie Best. Again, he has been a player that... I mean, he's our highest paid player. He's got a massive, massive salary. And I think he's got like a 250 million release clause. Um, so he does have to be producing the goods for us. Because he's probably our main, our main guy. Um, he needs to be scoring or assisting in pretty much every game or two. Uh, but Liverpool, I mean, kept coming at me and it was just always going to be one of these games where I got a chance, they got a chance. I mean, there was about four or five chances in the first 20 minutes alone. So when you have a game like that where it's kind of helter-skelter, sometimes the AI kind of take on this kind of possession-based um, style of play, which I actually prefer when it's, you know, helter-skelter because you get loads of chances. They make for exciting games and you can score or concede on any given play rather than these kind of possession based games um but i'm just loving what it's thrown up i'm really enjoying master league this year and as you can see here ian rush gets through lovely little sidestep and nearly buries it in the bottom corner he had the great dane beaten but just after half time we started to kind of play a little bit of possession and the reason why i did this was just to take the take the style from liverpool out of the game but i do hit a really wayward pass and these these kind of interceptions or losing possession like this is just an absolute disaster this year in pez 2020 especially on legend difficulty um and superstar difficulty because once you get rid of the ball your entire defensive ai takes about a second to actually react i don't know if i love it but it is realistic obviously because if you turn over possession as i did there you should be probably getting punished by the by the quality of players. I mean, think of if if Man City or Liverpool turned over possession like that in real life as of now, or Barca or Real Madrid. Um, you know, they're going to punish you if you're completely out of position. You're gone from attack to defence. Um, but it is something I want to keep my eye on as we play this masterly because, as I said, I am really enjoying it and I'm loving the different games. But I just sometimes feel that like you get so punished. Now this was a beautiful chance again. I'm kind of getting good at those in over the top true balls. They don't work online so you kind of have to stop doing them. But in Master League it is kind of different in how you can approach breaking down the defense and the defensive AI. And in fairness best he should be scoring that. I mean he's 93 rated. He's got I think 90 finishing. Steven Gerrard with a dirty late one there. I think it was on Cristiano Ronaldo. It could have been Irwin. I'm not too sure. We'll double check here now. It was on Giggsy. Yeah, it was a filthy one. Took the trail and leg. But that was how it ended, lads. One all. And we are on to the second match in this highlights package against River Plate. Now, being honest, right, I do need to start putting a couple of results away. Because, like, the there's such a quality amount of teams in this game. In this league that we're in with the Classics that... I'm not going to be able to just draw games and expect to get up, you know, because there's, you know, you've got Inter Milan, you've got Barca, you've got Roma, you've got Valencia, you've got so many good teams in this league um, that it's always going to be difficult to to kind of get through it. So if I'm drawing games that I should be winning and losing games that I should be drawing, we're always going to have an issue. But Roy Keane surges forward and hits the most beautiful peachy of passes, and from here Dennis Law just takes it around the keeper. And slaps it home. Now I haven't played Law at all. And a couple of you guys were saying to me on Twitter and on Facebook and stuff. 
I should kind of play the Holy Trinity of Law, Best and Charlton. Um, the problem with that is, you see, I'm going to have to drop Scolzi or, or, or Kino. Um, it's the same with Duncan Edwards. I mean, Duncan Edwards is probably my most, my best player with the most potential. He's like 22 in the squad. He's 93 overall or something. But I just always find, it, what about that for a finish, actually? Just to draw your attention to that. What about that for an equaliser? Um, and River Plate were a team that I didn't really respect that much at the start, you know, compared to like the last game where I was totally switched on with Liverpool. But I'll tell you, they made me respect them after the first 20 minutes. It was just an unreal performance from them, as you will see in a couple of minutes. But the first half just kind of blitzed by, and I didn't really get my foot on the on the, on the the game at all in this after I'd scored the goal. It was like something had kind of switched off uh, for me defensively. Look at this, one touch, two touch, bang. And to beat Schmeichel from there is always difficult. But as I was saying, I mean, it is it is kind of a thing where you do, because there is such brilliant players in the squad that I have, we're always going to have to leave unreal players on the bench. You know, whether they're down, I try to play the players in form, but I'm not going to drop Roy Keane ever. You know what I mean? So that's just my personal bias towards him. Scolzi always seems to be up. Giggs, Ronaldo and Beckham are looking to kind of fight for and fight and jostle for those wide positions. So... Um, Bestie's always going to be starting up front in that little pocket what about that for a 1-2 into Saviola and he punishes me and that is 2-1 to River Plate a team that to be honest with you I should be beaten you know I should be beaten they've got some amazing players but they're not the best classic squad in this option file I should be I should be well able to to punish them um, and then it went from bad to worse because the red the red mist descended on me and on Vidic and I think Keane got into the book as well he was lucky to be still on I just went absolutely through him here Vidic gets the red card on Saviola and uh, Saviola was just I mean a player that really surprised me he was amazing so you know from here you're always going to try and get back into the game but again it's just these type of games and I know anyone watching this you'll feel like that certain things happen like look at that I get intercepted there Dennis Law you know it should have been a pass through and then straight up the other end and it's 3-1 and that could have gone now in fairness that could have been 2 all. could have had my draw um, you know, with 60 minutes gone or whatever, I would have had a half an hour left to play, and I would have got a couple of more chances. There's another beautiful chance with Ronaldo, and it goes begging. But that is the inches that this game is decided on. You know, it was like Dennis Law I was spamming the button to try and get away. He couldn't just get the ball out from underneath his feet. And in fairness, it could have been four, it could have been five, it could have been six. And I have a feeling that I am going to, I'm going to get hammered in a game or two in this series because I'm, w I'm way too open at the back. I'm still, you know, my team spirit is still only like 60 something or 71 or two, I think now, um, which is always a worry. And as you can see here, I've dropped out of the top 16 in the standings because every team is picking up points, seemingly apart from me, because to have eight points after like, what, seven games and only five goals scored in seven games, it's just atrocious, really. It's desperate. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, I can't, I can't even say that I need a different player, I need a certain type of player, I don't have that much pace up front with this squad, but that's not saying that I should be, you know, I should be losing games like this, now, this is something to watch, okay, the scout is after finding a couple of players there, and the one, the one that's most notable is Ronaldinho, now, Ronaldinho has got insane stats, I don't know where I'd fit him in into the team, but if we were to buy him here, he would only cost about like 80, 90 million, he has a high salary, but to be honest, all the players on the squad have a high salary. So that is something you might get in touch in the comments below. Would you like to see me get R Ronnie? It would be it would be unreal to have him with Ronaldo, to have him with Beckham, to see if we could make him fit into the squad um, and hold on to everybody else as well. Again, a beautiful chance there from Bestie. He tries to flip it in over. And I said at the start of this match, I was like, look, I'm not going losing to Roma I can't lose or draw three games in a row in one episode I need to get a win I need to get a good performance and again this is what I'm talking about with Master League this game from the first 10-15 minutes it just felt completely different it just felt like my passes were sticking everything was going right Roma weren't closing me down quick enough and I just felt in total control I had about two or three chances in the first 20 minutes including this peach from Georgie Best and I just felt confident in scoring one or two today i was like okay look i have the beating of him uh ronaldo has the beating of his man bestie has the beating of the two center backs and all i need to do is get a couple of tap-ins get a couple of one twos and try and score a couple of goals and just really put myself on the front foot to get a win because you know i don't want to fall out of the leading chasing pack um or the leading pack in the standings i don't want to be falling 10 points behind the leaders or 
12 points or 13 points out of like the top three i do want to get promotion um simply because of the money like i do need the actual money else i'm going to have to sell a lot of the squad if we don't get promotion this year so that is the pressure that we're under um at least have to sell maybe three or four players and not you know not really replace them with top class classic players so that's not what i want to do so there is a bit of pressure on me but as I said, you know, every game in Master League is different and it wasn't until I'd say the 60th minute, I'd say, maybe an hour gone in the game in the second half um, that I started to feel really confident in this game and things started to click for me. Like, look at this over overlap from David Beckham. He gets the ball in here. He shows a bit of strength. Okay, I get a bit of luck with George Best going into this and from here it's just a ball across to Ronaldo and it's 1-0. Now, in the last game you saw Dennis Law couldn't get the ball out from his feet. In that game, I just get the most opportunist of, you know, ricochets or whatever you want to call it, bobbling up to me into my path and it's just a sweaty cross across the box and it's a tap in for Ronaldo um, and he does his signature trademark celebration. But, you know, I just kind of felt like I should have scored three or four goals in this game um, but that is the way that it goes sometimes. Ronaldo is is uh, getting on the score sheet. That is good enough for me. I'm going to be developing him as much as I can. Mexis goes off. Uh, he'll be disappointed with that result. But we are back up to 13th. And we're only three points off first now again. So that is how close this Classic League is. So let's, that is it. It's been a Hector Skelter. Helter Skelter? Yeah, Helter Skelter of, a, of an episode. Um, it's a shorter episode than last week. So I'm going to be mixing them up. One short, one longer. Whatever suits, whatever it looks best. Um, so don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Let me know on the Ronaldinho transfer decision what you think, whether I should go in for him, or if there's anywhere else, anyone else you'd like to see me try and target in the transfer market. And uh, yeah, we will go from there until the next time with episode 6. I'll be back in a while. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, and share. Peace.